We start with developing news. A horrible, horrible story from our neighbor to the west, Arizona. It's being called one of the worst disasters ever when it comes to wildfires. Unfortunately, 19 firefighters are dead, killed battling the Yarnell Hill Fire. That's a wildfire that is burning about 85 miles northwest of Phoenix. These are an elite group of firefighters. They're called hot shots, and within the past few weeks, they were actually here in New Mexico battling the Thompson Ridge Fire. Tara Merchner has more from Washington, D.C. A wildfire burning out of control in Arizona caught up with the very men sent in to tame it. 19 firefighters were killed uh, in uh, what's probably the worst disaster that's taken place in, in wild land history here in the state of Arizona. The men were members of the Granite Mountain Hotshots crew, an elite unit designed to fight wildfires. These photos show them working in New Mexico last summer. These are the guys that will go out there with 40, 50 pounds of equipment and walk five miles. They'll sleep out there uh, as they try to develop fire lines and put protection between homes, natural resources, and still try to remain safe. It's, these are quality people. The Yarnell Hill fire started Friday from a lightning strike, but high winds whipped up the flames Sunday. This fire was very radical in its behavior. Uh, they were um, just caught up in a very bad situation. People in the town of Yarnell were caught up in a bad situation as well. It was moving away. It looked like Yarnell was going to get spared. And then the wind came up and right back on us. Initial estimates are that as many as 200 homes in the town could be destroyed. The fire was just a storm. It was a, what do they call it, a conflagration, you know. It just went sweeping through so fast and so high. Officials are bringing in an additional 200 to 250 firefighters today to help battle the blaze. Tara Mergener for CBS News. This morning, the White House issued a statement expressing President Obama's condolences for the families of the firefighters who were killed and for the people who lost their homes in this tragic blaze. Happening now at 534, it is a new month with new laws here in New Mexico that you need to know about. One of them now requires more sex offenders to register in New Mexico, including those who are on sex offender lists in other states and later move here. Another law changes the retirement programs for PARA, the Public Employees Retirement Association. Now most workers have to pay more into their retirement plans, and the cost of living benefits they get every year are getting decreased. Also happening today, your student loan bills could be going up thanks to a stalemate in Congress. U.S. senators won't vote on a bill to stop federal student loan rates from doubling until July 10th. That means interest rates on subsidized Stafford loans doubled today, going from 3.4 to 6.8%. The House already passed a bill to prevent the rates from doubling. We'll let you know what happens when Congress goes back to work next week. Well, developing now, some folks in apartments here in Albuquerque are wondering if their air conditioner is going to work this morning. Yeah, they say they've been having to endure the heat without cool air. Residents at one Albuquerque apartment complex are using a bunch of fans right now. Renters who don't want to be identified at the Sun Creek Village Apartments tell us that the air conditioning is broken. They say it's been this way for months, and they claim that the management hasn't been doing anything about it. They said that they were aware of the issue, but if there was health concerns, that we should just stay somewhere else or with family. But unfortunately, we don't have family up here. Now, another tenant showed News 13 a notice that stated that they were aware of the issue but suggested to turn on a fan or stay with someone else. Residents say they feel stuck because of the high cost to break the lease and move somewhere else. News 13 tried to reach the management yesterday, but their office was closed. Happening now, the wildfire burning in the Gila is growing. Yeah, the Silver Fire has now scorched 133,000 acres, which is about 200 square miles. However, firefighters do have it about 45% contained this morning. Almost 700 firefighters are battling the flames in the southwestern part of the state. Particularly, they're focusing on the west side of the fire where there are seven homes. They're about two miles from the flames right now. So far, firefighters have prevented the Silver Fire from burning any homes, but it did destroy a building in the Nemus Creek. And firefighters will be back today battling a new wildfire in the Santa Fe National Forest. Lightning sparked the 
ought to go on fire about 18 miles northeast of Guyanus this weekend. So far, it's burned at least 25 acres. All right, meteorologist Kristen Van Dyke joining us once again. You're keeping a close eye on the weather conditions when it comes to these fires. Right, overall looking a lot better than it did. You don't have the heat and the really dry conditions, and the winds will calm down. And we're going to see more showers and storms, obviously, around the state, too. That helps things out. We will have to watch for strong gusts, so that could blow the fire erratically as those storms do start to develop. Uh, most of the shower activities pushed down to the south. That will diminish, but still a lot of leftover moisture. In fact, looking at the humidity, most of it out across the east. We're going to see more scattered activity this afternoon across central and southern New Mexico. And even the moisture in Silver City at 60%. So over in uh, that area for the Gila, Silver's fire forecast, the big concern today will really be the thunderstorm gust out of any storms that could develop. Highs will be in the low 90s, so it'll be warm, but not as hot as it has been. A uh, wind steady between 15 and 20, 25 miles an hour. Uh, so again, a little bit breezy, but we could certainly see stronger gusts on the order of 40, 50 miles an hour out of any storms that do develop. There will be the potential to maybe get a little bit of rain too as humidity goes up. We'll start off at right around 60%, but even in the afternoon, only dropping to about 40%. So we're even getting some of the moisture finally into the southwest. No fire warning to talk about today. I'll have more details on your complete forecast coming up in a few minutes. All right, Kristen, thank you. A pedestrian bridge in northeast Albuquerque that was damaged by a fire over the weekend will not reopen for months. And on top of that, it's going to cost you a lot of money to fix it. In fact, the State Department of Transportation says it'll probably cost at least $100,000 to fix the tramway bridge here. It's between Candelaria and Manal. You won't be able to walk on the bridge for anywhere from three to six months. However, you still can drive under it. It's actually structurally intact, um, so the bridge itself, the part that goes over the highway, is safe, but it's the deck that leads up to it that's burned and is not safe and is going to have to be replaced. Firefighters are still trying to figure out exactly what started this fire that damaged the bridge. People who saw it and called 911 so they also saw some kids running from the area, but investigators don't know who they are or if they're connected to it. Well, happening now, this is week four for the former Albuquerque police officer accused of murdering his wife. And prosecutors could wrap up their case as soon as tomorrow afternoon. They say Levi Chavez killed his wife Tara back in 2007, then tried to make it look like a suicide. But Levi says no, Tara was depressed and really did kill herself. We'll be back in court today and we'll let you know what happens. The man accused of being involved in a deadly shooting in northeast Albuquerque is expected in court today. 36-year-old Modesto Ruiz was arrested last month. Police say he shot two people near an apartment complex on San Mateo and Lomas. One of the victims, 34-year-old Samara Prada, died. The other was seriously hurt.